All right, Sainers, we're not uh, gonna do an intro <laughs> this week. This is just serious business. We're getting straight into it. This is round 15. It is the preview on the Saints TV YouTube channel. We take on the Sydney Swans Saturday night football at the SCG, 7.25 p.m. No bullshit. This is our biggest game of the year. And I know there's been a lot of big games of the year so far, but this is the biggest game of the year. The winner, season's alive. We can keep going. There's good, positive vibes in the air. We lose, it's the opposite. We're out of the eight, most likely, and we've got a tough month of football ahead of us. And it starts this week. And it is the case with every top eight team this week. It's the first time in a decade or so um, that every top eight team is playing another top eight team. So it's a huge round for us because four teams in the top eight are most likely, unless there's a draw, are going to drop points. That means that if you win, you really do capitalize on a lot of teams around you losing. And that is the best time to win. Every week's good to win, but especially when there's, play, there's teams above you and below you that are losing and you can create a gap and you can climb above a few teams. And that's going to be the case this week. If we win, top four is still a chance. If we lose, top eight's almost not a chance. Like it's... It's a nutcase type of year. It's crazy. So um, we've got the Sydney Swans at the SCG, and they're in a very similar boat to us. Their form earlier in the year was great, like us, and of late, it's dropped off. And they had a really disappointing performance against Port Adelaide last week. I watched that game at Adelaide Oval, and they were nowhere to be seen. They were like us. They just didn't turn up. The third quarter, I think they conceded the first six or seven goals, and You know, for us in the third quarter, we considered the last six or seven goals. So very similar form lines for these two teams. So this is probably, to me, the most even game of the round out of all the top eight team clashes. This is the one that would be hardest for a lot of the neutrals to tip. So obviously, the main talking point anytime we play Sydney Swans is Buddy Franklin. And he is a player that loves to kick goals against us. I think his record against us is probably top five. In terms of his opponents, he always averages probably three to four goals a game against us. Um, It's an interesting one on who goes to him. You know, we've got Dougal Howard, who was in pretty bad form last week, on Peter Wright, who's not agile like Franklin. And then you've got Cal Wilkie, who probably matches up quite well against Franklin. I think he's taken him on in recent times, maybe even last year at Marvel when we beat them. I'm not too sure what matchups we had in that game, but I remember Wilkie taking on a pretty good player and doing a good job. So... Does Kel Wilkie go to a Lance Franklin? Do you know? Do we do we put Dugues on another tall forward? Do we turn him into an intercept defender and bring in someone like Joyce in the lineup? So there's there's a lot of different possibilities to this game, but obviously the one certainty we've got is that we're going to have our captain and our best player Jack Steele running out, leading the team out for the first time in six weeks. So that is the big in for us. You know that creates a different level of confidence for the St Kilda Footy Club when someone like Jack Steele is playing. And I think against a team like Sydney that have some pretty good contested players, it's no better timing for him to come back. And, you know, some people will say, oh, is he underdone? Hope he's not rushed back. When Jack Steele says that he's fit, he's bloody fit and you're playing. And he says he's fit. So he's in. He's training. All, he's trained all week. He's 100% in. I think the other player that we can't wait to get back, and we really missed him last week, and I don't think we realized how important he was, is D-Mac. You know, we're going to get D-Mac back. So having him on the wing, having D-Mac running up and down those lines, offering defensive pressure, as well as good aerial ability and a knack of kicking a goal, I think that's invaluable because he gets back. And I don't think our wingers last week got back at all. Our back line was one-on-one, six-on-six all day long. And apart from Membry going back and and, uh, supporting in the second quarter, it wasn't really... A, you know, a team defense type game. It was really, we just let them deal with the bombardment of 61 inside 50s against the Bombers. And at the end of the day, any team that does that, no matter how good or shit they are, they're going to kick a pretty good score and put the defense under pressure. And that's exactly what happened. We cannot allow Sydney to do that against us. If Sydney gets 60 plus inside 50s in this game with Franklin and uh, and Heaney and, and Papley and these forwards... They're going to have a day out, and it's going to be it's going to be panic stations for us pretty early in the game. So, I think you know having Steele back, having Win Hager, I think he should definitely play. Having those two back 
uh, with Seb, with Crouchy, Jonesy, who needs to lift and he may even be dropped, who knows. Just makes us a bit more uh, consistent and a, it just solidifies the midfield a bit more. Whereas last week, we're kind of relying on everyone to pick up the pieces of Jack Steele. This week, he's back. We don't need anyone to pick up the pieces. They can go back to playing their own game. They don't have to worry about, oh, I need to get more contested possessions because there's no Steely. Oh, I need to get back. I need to do this. I need to do that. Completely changes their mindset. Now it's Seb can go back to taking the bloody game on. Jones can go back to taking the game on. We can get Crouchy doing the in and under with Steele. There's support there. You know, There's the chemistry that I think we kind of underestimated. It's great getting players back like Hunter Clark and Billings, but at the same time, they weren't there for 10 weeks, you know? So we're getting close to our full strength team, but that means getting players back that have been injured for a while. And that affects chemistry. That affects that, um, you know, that, that understanding between your teammates. So it's going to be a couple of weeks, but hopefully this week with Clark and Billings getting a second go at it in a row, um, we'll see a big improvement on their output. But obviously, you know, the, the rest of the team's output on understanding how these players play now. So I'm going into this game with a weird level of confidence. I said that against Brisbane and that was undone, but that was undone more towards, you know, injuries and some bad luck. Um, last week, there's a bit of confidence again and uh, that backfired, but I did say it was a danger game if we don't turn up and we didn't turn up and guess what? It turned into more than a danger game. It turned into a, a very, very bad upset. So in this one, I think our form against Sydney is pretty good. We beat them pretty comfortably last year at Marvel. And we all remember the SCG game, the Jack Higgins game, where he kicked one goal six, I think. And uh, we probably should have won that game as well. It was just the errant kicking that cost us. Um, and before that, I think in 2020, we beat them by about 50 points as well. We match up well. I think the midfield battle is going to be crucial, but they're obviously going to be missing their Ruckman, Laddams. I think he got suspended for a week. And uh, Tom Hickey should come back in, but he's obviously coming back from injury as well. And big men take a bit longer to you know, come back from big injuries. So I think that um, hopefully if Paddy and Rowe can improve from last week, that gives us first use in the midfield. And if we can get more inside 50s than them, I really do back Max King. And I really want Tim Membry to have a big one. Not a big one in terms of stats. A big one in terms of shots on goal. I don't want to see Tim Member in the back line at all in this game. I want him to be forward and on the wing as the chop out kick. I don't want him in the D50 at all. The other player that I want in is Shaman. So we'll talk about my predicted ins. Obviously Steele and D-Mac have got to be two there. I think Winhager's got to come in. And then I think forward of center, we need Shaman in. I think that... You know, some people are like, Jakey, why the hell are you talking up Shaman every week? He's averaging one goal a game and about five touches. And... They miss the point when they say that. They miss the point. Look at how Max King was playing when Sharman was taking one of the better intercept defenders in. Tom Stewart and then Adelaide, um, North Melbourne, all these games. He you know, allowed Max King to run and jump at the ball unimpeded. And since then, since sharman has been out, King's form's not been great. Like, let's face it. He's only five goals off the leading col- of leading the Coleman. And he's been. it feels like he's been down for three weeks. So it's crazy to think how far ahead Maxi could be um, if he had a really consistent run at it and kicked, you know, three or four goals in a row in a couple of games like he did earlier in the year. But I think that if you look at Max's form when Shaman's in versus when he's out, big difference there. So I'm really looking forward to seeing if we can get Shaman back in. I know some people want changes to the back line, but I really just don't see any changes apart from maybe a pattern coming out. But then you might put Ben Long back or do you put in Highmore? Or do you bring in Joyce and then relieve Dukes of the fullback role and say, okay, you're going to be the intercept marker in this game and not bring in Highmore? So to me, I think it's more the midfield and forward line that will change. I think changing the back line too much is always a risk. Um, and I think Rats is the sort of guy that will give Dukes and give Pato and these sort of guys one more week to hit their straps, one more week to prove that they deserve to be starting 22. And that starts by beating Sydney away from home in, in a massive game. On the weekend, so I'm 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 looking forward to this. I think that you know player stats wise, uh, Cal Cal Mills is is critical for them. He's the number one ranked player on the ground between the two sides combined this year. Jack Steele is second with Brad Crouch and Jack Sinclair third and fourth respectively. And then you've got Luke Parker, who's been very good this year, and he's obviously their spiritual leader in the middle of the ground. And he can get forward. He's a big body, great at clearance work. He's just a very very good player. Gresham, we want him to go forward and impact. 
because that's one thing that we haven't talked about yet is our lack of um, impact with our smalls in Butler and Higgins. So do we drop a Butler based on last week? You know, is that does Butler make way for Sharman? And then that allows Higgins and then Gresh to rotate because Steele's back. We don't need Gresh full time in the middle as much. We can rotate those guys forward and mid. So I think um, we just need to get these ins and out right. If we get that right, we get the balance right with our mids and our forwards, I really do see us uh, a big shout in this game. And if we don't turn up, then that just says, you know, the players, they just don't want it hard enough. You know, this is just another game for them. But for us, it's not another game. You know, this is Saturday night. This is order in, stay home, get the red wine ready, and just be nervous for the first 10 minutes and see what St. Kilda team turns up. But the fact that we've got some good form against Sydney is uh, is really important, I think, because they're one of our teams only two years ago. We hadn't beaten them in a while, and they would beat up on us. And since then, we've beaten them twice in the last three, and we should have beaten them that other time as well at the SCG, and it could have been three from three. So I'm really looking forward to this game. I know that a lot of people are still a bit down after the Essendon game, but... Um, hopefully this preview uh, gets you a bit excited about the game because I'm pumped. Sadly, there's no Bentley Social as well. I would have loved to have had a Bentley Social event this weekend, but the Social is booked out, but we'll hopefully get it for the West Coast away game in a couple of weeks and the Geelong game, I think, in round 21 or 22. So stay tuned for news on that. Um, But yeah, I'm interested to hear your thoughts saying as that is my spiel on the game. I just wanted to keep it pretty basic because I know that it's easy to overcomplicate these previews. And based on last week's performance, I think we just need to get to the fundamentals and get back to the basics. And that's kind of the tone I want to set in this preview is we need to get back to the basics. Get the midfield right, strong defense, capitalize forward, and we're a big shout in this game. Because Sydney's form is as shaky as anyone else in the top eight like us. So this is a big opportunity for us to to take, uh, you know, take a scalp, a top eight scalp away from home. And I think that builds confidence. But most importantly, puts us back up to fifth or sixth on the ladder, puts Sydney in a very upsetting position where they could be out of the eight by the end of the round. And um, and our season's firmly alive with a couple of big weeks ahead as well. So I hopefully enjoyed that saying. As if you did, please like the video. Please comment your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you think. Who are your, you know, your projected ins and outs of the game? Um, your tip as well, margin, um, and just your, your general feeling. I want to know, do you feel confident? Are you shit nervous like me? There's just a lot of, it's a lot of mixed emotions. I feel excited, but I feel terrified. It's, it's not easy being a Saints fan, but you know, uh, I wouldn't have it any other way in a weird, sick, you know, kind of way. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, please subscribe as well. Just hit the subscribe button and I'll be back as always right after the game for my live review. Hopefully with a bit of champagne and uh, to celebrate a big win. But until then, Samus, take care of yourselves. And as always, go you mighty Samus. See you Saturday night, Samus.